Hey guys, welcome back to another week of what's for dinner. This week I have some really super quick and easy recipes for you. So if you are looking for something to just throw together on a busy weeknight, I've definitely got you covered in today's video. If you are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you over on my channel. I do a new what's for dinner every Sunday, lots of crock pot meals, meal prep, and other motherhood related content. So if that is something you're interested in, make sure you are subscribed. But let's go ahead and get into today's video. For this first dinner, I'm making some Taco Bravo tacos. These are definitely one of my favorites. I love to get them at Taco John's, so I thought it would be fun to make them at home this time. So I'm actually just starting off by making my own refried beans. I just didn't have any on hand, and I actually wanted to make some refried black beans. So I found this recipe on Pinterest, and it turned out super good. I'm gonna have it linked down below for you guys, but I basically just heated up a little bit of olive oil, and then I added in one can of black beans, with some seasonings. It's basically just garlic powder, onion powder, cumin, and salt and pepper. Really, really basic, but these turned out so good. They were honestly probably the best free fried beans that I've ever had. So I just let those cook up for about five minutes. And then once they were nice and soft, I just kind of mashed them up with a wooden spoon and these turned out super good. So I'm gonna have this recipe linked down below for you guys. Of course, you can also just use refried beans out of a can if you want, and that will turn out just fine. The original tacos from Taco John's actually just have the regular refried beans, but I just thought these black refried beans looked super good, and they definitely were really delicious in this taco recipe. So I pulled all of the refried beans right out of this skillet and I did not want to dirty another pan so I just quick took a warm washcloth and I took out any of like the residue from the beans just so I didn't have to dirty another pan and then I'm just adding in a little bit of olive oil and I'm just going to saute up one yellow onion. I always like to add in onion when I'm cooking up tacos. I just really love the flavor so I'm just sauteing that up until it's nice and soft and then I'm actually going to be adding in my ground beef so I actually had my ground beef cooked and ready to go otherwise you could just throw your ground beef right in with your onion and then I'm also adding in one package of taco seasoning mix and some water you can just do this according to how you normally make your tacos I always just follow the directions on the back of the package I let this meat mixture simmer together for probably about five minutes or so just until all of the flavors had really cooked together. And then I'm heading over to my plate here. I just have one medium flour tortilla and I'm just spreading all of those refried beans right across the tortilla. I definitely chose to do a lot of them just because I really like refried beans and these refried beans were so good. They had so much flavor. So like I said, definitely try out this recipe or you can use the canned kind as well. And then you're just gonna add on a regular taco shell, fill it up with all of your favorite taco fixings. So for me, I added all of the ground beef in there. I did some cheddar cheese, some sour cream, some salsa, and of course some lettuce. And you guys, this was like one of the best tacos that I've ever made at home. It was so, so good. If you've never tried the Taco John's Taco Bravos, they're super delicious, but I honestly think that this might've turned out even better at home. So I'm totally going to be making these again. Definitely give this recipe a shot if you really like tacos. This was definitely my personal favorite dinner of the week. I absolutely love this dinner. So if you like tacos, this is a really good recipe to try out. For this next dinner, I'm making a cheesy sausage pasta, which turned out really good. It's almost like a glorified mac and cheese. So I'm just starting off by heating up a little bit of olive oil, and then I'm adding in about a pound of just like some ring sausage that I had sliced up, as well as about one small white onion that's also chopped. And I'm just gonna saute this up for like five to seven minutes until the onions are nice and translucent, and that sausage is cooked all the way through. So that is cooking up in my other pot. I just have some boiling water. I'm adding in a full box of bow tie pasta. I am salting the water, but you can really use whatever pasta that you have on hand for this recipe. Mm -hmm. 
Once the sausage started to get a little bit brown and I could tell that it was done cooking, I just pulled all of the sausage and the onions off to a separate plate. And I'm just gonna use this same pot to cook the sauce up in. I always love to use my Dutch oven pot, especially for any sort of sauce. I just feel like it works really well to make sauces in. It's a really nice, heavy pot. I will have this one linked down below. I just got mine off of Amazon. It was actually a gift and we love this thing. So into my pot here, I am just getting my butter all melted and ready to go. This is about half a stick of some melted butter. Make sure to turn your heat down so you don't burn this, but you're just gonna let all of that melt. And then you're gonna be adding in about three tablespoons of flour and just whisk all of that together until it is all combined. Once the roux has came together, I let it cook for like maybe 30 seconds to a minute and then I'm adding in one cup of milk. I believe this was whole milk that I was using on this night, but I think you could use pretty much any milk. So you're just gonna slowly add that in there and then you're also going to add about a cup of some chicken broth and you're just gonna gradually add all of this together until it makes a sauce. Now I think what made this a little bit different than your classic mac and cheese is that I added in some extra seasonings. So of course I added in like salt and pepper, but I also added in quite a bit of garlic powder. I did lots of paprika as well as quite a bit of chili powder. And that just made the flavors in this mac and cheese super delicious. I'm definitely gonna be adding this to homemade mac and cheese from now on. It wasn't overpowering at all. It wasn't spicy, but it just really enhanced all of the flavors and I absolutely loved it. So just season that to taste and then you're gonna be adding in about two cups of cheddar cheese total. I added in probably about a cup at a time and just whisked it together until everything was really nice and creamy and combined. Now here is the sauce. It was really nice and creamy. And then I'm just adding the sausage and the onions right back in there and kind of giving it a quick mix together before adding in my pasta. So once your pasta is done, you can just go ahead and drain that off like you would normally. Make sure your pasta is cooked all the way through. And then you probably are gonna wanna add a little bit of extra seasoning. I would give it a quick taste at this point, or you can wait until you add your pasta. I personally decided to add in a little bit more chili powder, Little bit more salt and pepper and it turned out really really good like i said the flavors were really good in this and it was a very basic dish to throw together you probably have pretty much all of these ingredients in your home so if you're looking for a nice budget-friendly option this is a really great one If your family likes the classic mac and cheese, I think this is a really fun one to try out. My family really enjoyed it and I will definitely be making this recipe again. For this next dinner, I'm sharing this chicken burrito recipe. It was super good. I made these probably about a month ago and our family loved them, so I had to go ahead and make them again. So I'm just adding in probably about a little over a tablespoon of butter into my skillet here with a little bit of olive oil. I always like to do a combination of olive oil and butter. I just really like it when I'm cooking up chicken. And then I'm just adding in my chicken breast here. I just cut this up into some pretty small pieces. I would say you want it to be pretty bite-sized. I mean, of course you can do whatever size you want, but I prefer ours to be bite-sized. And then I'm just loading this up with lots of really good seasoning. So I'm using Using onion powder, garlic powder, and then this Tony's seasoning, which makes the chicken super delicious for burritos. If you have never tried out Tony's before, definitely give this one a shot. It always turns out absolutely delicious. So I just sauteed that chicken up probably for about like five to seven minutes until it was completely cooked through. And then I'm just gonna be assembling my burritos. So these are the larger tortillas and I'm just loading them up with tons of different ingredients. So this is mine. I always like to do sour cream. I do brown rice. I always cook our brown rice in some chicken broth to make it really flavorful for burritos. I'm adding corn, some chicken, the black beans, as well as some salsa and some cheese in there. Of course, you can totally play around with this and add whatever you want to your burritos. I 
really like that I can just customize these to my family. My husband always does not want the beans in there, so I leave those out of his. But these burritos are so good, they're so filling. So I just wrap that up and then I'm actually gonna throw this into the air fryer. You can also just do them in a pan and just kind of like seal them up that way and crisp them up. But you guys, these turn out so good in the air fryer. If you've never tried making your own burritos at home, you've definitely gotta try this one out. So I'm just throwing them into my air fryer. This is the Alec Holmes one. I was able to fit about three of the burritos in there. I'm just spraying them with a little bit of the vegetable oil cooking spray just to like really crisp them up nicely. I just put these in for maybe like 10 minutes total. I did about five minutes on each side and these turned out super crispy. They were really nice and golden brown and they also warmed up really good the next day for leftovers. So definitely one of my favorites for the week. All right guys, that is going to wrap up this week of what's for dinner. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you have not already. I would love to have you over on my channel for more cooking content and motherhood videos. But that is going to be it for today's video. I will catch you all in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. As a young girl, it feels we're mine. We played hide and seek for hours. Raised our shadows among the pines So offshore, playful and free Without a care